we've been out doing some very big walks, you know, like 20 milers, but from home and doing a big loop and returning to home, which means that we don't even go much further than five miles from home, because if you do a big loop, then lots of wigglies, that's the way it works. And I'm an ultra runner, so supposedly I've, I've, I've been on every trail within a five mile ride at radius of my home. I've been on everything, looked at everything. I haven't been on this trail before. It's a new one, it's lovely. Between farms, through a lovely section of woodland, um, so because we can't go too far, I've had to explore those little green dots on the map that I've always wondered. I wonder if that's a path, I wonder if that's actually used, I wonder where it goes. Um, that way? So if you're taking Kim on a good walk, it needs to include caves. And then she classes it as a good walk. It's 28 metres, so it's looking a bit overgrown, but yeah, it's in, in there somewhere. She's found it. Oh, it is buried deep in there. Sorry, didn't you see me? Kim is a scout leader. She looks after the beavers. So we're about to walk through the local... What is this? It's called Moor Lakes and it's um, our new sc scout site, the campsite. They bought the, the ground um, quite a long time ago, but they really only just began to um, update it and to, to build things, structures and and really use it because we've still got the lease on our old campsite which we've had for 50 years or something. All right this is another new path I'm looking forward to well, I haven't done before and sometimes paths disappear. They grow over people don't use them. Oh that, is that it? That looks like it might be. Huh that doesn't look too promising. I don't think these are human paths. I think they are badger paths. Yeah, she's got a nice big set there. Maybe we should camp up here and uh, come badger watching. That, that, that must be the gate that we yeah. were, is the okay, path that we were yeah, looking for. That's the crossing. So that's the path that we were looking for, I think, that we didn't find. So if we went the other way, we could find out where it goes. Ah, look! Ah. Love it in Britain when you're lost and then you find oh, one of these. Just to be clear, whilst probably the entirety of this video is us outdoors, we're still spending most of our time at home. It's just that video of me sat on my computer working away isn't terribly interesting. Knocking my brains out and losing my cap every time. What have you done there? Oh, there's a building here. How British is that, eh? <laughs> Footpaths, ordnance survey maps, old, old, old churches.
So we treat these long walks like long bike rides in that we're completely self-sufficient and don't stop. So we're kind of maybe straying to the boundaries of our local area, but we're not, you know, interacting with people. For example, the pub shut, otherwise we would definitely guaranteed be in that pub. We did it. We got back in the water again this week. Um, well, we got back on the water and then I accidentally got back in the water when I fell out of my boat. outside work still in our local area amazingly enough and uh, paddling in Swansea Bay which we probably wouldn't normally bother doing because it's not a super interesting paddle but it's always nice to see the world from a different perspective and it's a bit bobbly see we want to do more of this in the future Kim's not very comfortable with deep, with deep water. And by the way, this is all her idea. So the aim is to spend time in the water, get more acclimatised, get more experienced, get good skills, get good knowledge, and be safer on the water. And then we can do bigger things. Big things come from small things, right? Mm. Plastic bottle. <laughs> uh, we'll get that in a bin. Fine. <laughs> First trip out, keep it simple, eh? Oh, here we go. An hour and a quarter after high tide, and that's already got a bit of pull through there. Right, let's get back to comfort and safety. caught out by a little bit of a sideways swell that I forgot was getting pulled around the island when I pulled out the other bit. Don't. Got back in the boat alright. This is what I mean, it's the shakedown of the kit and shakedown of your skills. Um, it's a reminder to uh, look a bit more, pay a bit more attention to what's going on around you. Yeah. The hospital there, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gone so shallow we can touch the bottom. Oh. Done. First paddle of the year. Yay! Oh, that was good. It was good. My okay. knees hurt, my arse hurts. Oh. Right, pack it up. We haven't climbed this bit. So I no. brought Kim here to show her some of the boulder problems that I did with Ben. But I can't find them. 
that bit I recognise, and that, but this bit, I don't remember it looking like this, and I think this huge block used to be up against that block, and it's sheared and twisted and fallen, can you see? So this, this shiny calcite stuff was it's that shiny calcite stuff in there. there. So this used to be up against here. lockdown is progressing I find my motivation for work getting lower and lower and lower on the one hand I quite like, get, like getting emails now which is unusual I hate emails but now oh emails something to do I have a friend who? <laughs> yeah. but it is really difficult to kind of think right I'm gonna do this thing that self-motivation thing I get this sense from other people we've been talking to that a lot of people are kind of reassessing their lives as their lives have been changed quite dramatically dramatically That's dramatically and um i mean i think we do that quite a bit anyway don't we yeah like how much do we really need to earn how much do we really need to work how how can we get more time for doing this and exploring the world and doing but the things we like valuing your time and, and mm. what you want out of your time because this time that we've had in lockdown really made me reevaluate again the importance of family time just slowing down it's been nice being together just, yeah exactly having time together with the kids although they've not wanted to do much of the walking and stuff but, but we've done a lot of stuff at we've home done a together. lot with them and maybe not jack but... and you know and jack's learning he's, he's been teaching himself yeah to play the guitar and he's been doing a lot of drawing um which he doesn't have time or inclination to do much um but I just really evaluate, I've just sort of spent more time re-evaluating. Re-evaluate how to get through here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that looks deep over there. Just there, I think. Yeah, nothing's going to change with us because we've got a mortgage to pay off and we've got two kids. So I'm going to be doing this job for maybe another 10 years. So it will be interesting to see if other people change the way they think about life as well or maybe we'll all just go back to what we always have done and nothing will ever change humans are like that So we had um, two options, either to take the direct route cross country back home or continue meandering around the coast and then go cross country back home and we thought we'd see how our legs felt and our brains felt and good. <laughs> we're doing the meandering walk around the coast because yeah we've done what 20k and feel fine? Yeah I feel fine, got a hot spot on my toe. Feel fine, oh but dear. It's like a, it's bloody blisters from running and walking anyway. It's like a foot skin shakedown. It's getting a little bit Welsh. Staying cool, school kids, stay motivated, 
get stuff done etc etc